nice looking installation. What? No way. Yeah, this is what we got. This is what we get. And then of course, of course everything gets blamed on, on Goodman, right? <laughs> but enough about Goodman. Yay! Here's our, our filter. I'm gonna put a 20 by 25. This was last replaced. Oh yeah, last year. We'll make sure that that pump is ready for action for the summer. Ideally, we do not want single wall vent pipe, but I've been here before and we're gonna be trying to sell stuff that customers uh, already said no to. We try one time and that's it. I'm not too familiar with these. Takagi. I don't know if anybody can comment on these. This is, what does it say? Well, that's the model number. Hopefully it's not blurry. But if you guys can tell me, is that the correct type of vent pipe? And is it okay to vent them into a transite pipe? I got a suspicion that it's not the correct type vent of flu, but if anybody can tell me if that's the correct vent, I'd appreciate it. I'm just gonna note the things that I would have done differently, which is this gas line. I would have probably come out through here, gone in through here, or I would have gone all the way to the back. Well, at least they hard piped it out. That's a good thing. A Romix connector here would have been nice so that this doesn't vibrate and then cause a short for the low voltage in the future. They did use a Romix connector here, but they didn't tighten it. And then I don't know why they did this when the plug is right there. I think they have enough, enough slack to reach all the way to the plug. So I think we'll switch that and we'll replace that filter. Hopefully I have it. It's been a while since I've been here. I've been here once before. That's why I didn't. And then I got the new software, so I didn't have it then. I don't think I wrote down the size of that filter. We'll get started. Another thing I almost forgot, like this for example. We'll fix that for them. Now, putting the, the bulb. For whatever reason, nobody ever straps a bulb, a sensing bulb from the TXV. But I'll cut that open to show you. Okay, well, because I'm pretty sure that they're not gonna have the strap there. I'm gonna look in my junk box. Usually I, I save the extra ones, and by extra ones I mean the ones that I find at other job sites. Whenever uh, I go to a job and I do the demo and they don't have the straps, but I find this usually somewhere in the back thrown in the floor, or if I replace a coil that was leaking, I'll save these just for such an occasion. All of these I pulled out from other jobs that didn't have them on. Just in case you're wondering where I got those. But here we go, see? So one of the things that I do is whenever I grab something from the van, like a filter, stuff that I don't stock many of, I'll put it in my notes on my phone. So next time I go to the store, uh, pick up the filter that I need. I hope the next job doesn't need one of these because then uh, I'll be in trouble. But I got my tape, I got my filter, and I got my strap that is missing for sure on that sensing bulb. Okay. First things first, this is annoying. There, now we change our filter. But before we put it in, check the date, April 13th. All right. So let's take a look at this pump. It looks kind of disgusting in there. You see that? Man, I hope you can see that. It looks pretty gross. So we'll be taking that out and flushing it. Well, then I'm gonna unplug it just in case I try to run it while I'm doing this. This is gonna leak water more than likely when I disconnect it. Hopefully it doesn't break. Sometimes it will break when you disconnect this. So you could probably see all the gunk now better. You see that? Pretty gross. There we go. Disgusting does that look? Ugh. Definitely gotta take a picture of that to show my customer. That's the before. So the trick here is if you pinch it here a little bit, see, see, you pinch it here a little bit, and then to 
twist it back and forth. Uh, it will help so that this doesn't break. There we go. Then you can just turn this up so that it doesn't keep draining. All right. If I keep teaching you guys all this stuff, I'm going to be out of a job. That's what they tell me. Think that's true? Comment down below if you think that's true. I think most homeowners, they just want to know what it is you're doing. Not because they want to do it. And there are those that are going to want to do it. I think the majority, they just want to know what it is you're doing. Take this outside, hose it down. Use that filter again so you can get a better view in the light here. So now you can see all that disgusting stuff that I'm uh, spraying out of this pump. But it didn't come off just with the hose. I actually had to use a brush to brush it off. And then I uh, just got to be careful not to... I don't like to get the top part too wet. I could probably got it more wet than I would have preferred right there. But you, yeah, you want to keep the water away from the top. But definitely the bottom hit it hard with some good pressure to get it all nice and clean. Here I'm just putting on my kick-ons. They're like some oversized sandals. You can just kick them on like uh, on top of your boots and they're adjustable with Velcro that I can't remember who I saw on Facebook posted them and I bought them because they just seem like a great idea because I hate putting on those shoe covers. Almost forgot. Do not forget to take your after picture. Take the picture. Snap it all back together. Oh no, now I'm afraid that if you learn how to reconnect this condensate pump, I'm gonna lose my job. Oh no! That was a serious question. Do you guys think that we're gonna go out of business if we show customers what we're doing exactly? When we do little simple fixes like this? Honestly, I don't like to do these kind of jobs. I'd rather do a major repair or an all new installation. This is not what pays my bills. This is just something that keeps my customer happy and feeling assured that their system is gonna work. Summertime <laughs> makes them feel comfortable that somebody that knows what they're looking at is looking at their system. So I put this back in. Now we're gonna take a look at sensing bulb. All right, moment of truth. I don't think they did. Oh, there it is. They did put a strap on the sensing bulb. Oh, okay, but they just didn't tighten it. All right, we'll take care of that. So I ideally you'd want the sensing bulb on on a horizontal piece of pipe, but in the instructions they do tell you that you can put it vertically, but it's preferred to be horizontally installed. So now I want to take a picture of the before and after. I always try to take a before and after picture just so that my customer sees the value of what they're paying for. When they're just told by you what you did, it's, it's a matter of trust. But when you show them pictures of what you did, so it gives them peace of mind knowing that you're not lying. So just wrap your strap around the pipe and the bulb and then shove it through the slot and then you'll see that it has the number actually engraved on it. So you know if you got it in uh, tight uh, enough uh, when you see the number, if it's 7 eighths pipe, it should, the engraved numbers, uh, 7 eighths uh, fraction should be right there. If you're not at 7 eighths and the pipe is 7 eighths and you tighten it, it's not going to be tight. It's going to move around just like it was before I fixed it. So now we're going to take a look inside the furnace. I'm pretty sure you noticed a big, big no-no that they did on this furnace, which is they installed a return behind the furnace where you're not supposed to cut in through. But that's where it is. I've already mentioned several things to the customer that need to be fixed. This is just a maintenance call. I'm actually doing more than what I should be doing. Typically what I do on, on these maintenance calls is I'll, I'll do just my routine filter change, clean the condensate pumps or flush the drain, stuff like that, the drain pan. Uh, if it's dirty, I'll clean it out. Sometimes you have debris that goes in there, insulation usually. The other thing that, um, that I'll do as a bonus is I'll fix one or two things like right here, the strap on the sensing bulb, I went ahead and adjusted that. And then whenever I come back on the next time, uh, I'll 
do something else. Maybe I'll put uh, some Romex connectors on that low voltage. But as far as um, all the things that need to be done, right now I'm just checking the hoses, make sure they don't have any cracks, that they're not brittle, that the connectors are all in tight, that they're not loose. And then just doing a visual will give you a lot of signs that what's going on, you know, like if they see water stains inside or anything like that, it, it, those kind of things will, will clue me as to what's going on and other potential problems. What do you do? You tell the customer that pretty much the whole thing needs to be uninstalled and redesigned and their eyes open really big and, and that's it. I mean, I'm not going to keep insisting that they got to do all these corrections. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Um, how would you handle this type of situation with a customer? Or if you're a customer, how would you like to be approached? What would be the best approach just to let you know, um, you know, this needs to be done? I'm really curious to know. Um, so please comment down below. Just remember that after you do these things, it's not a bad idea to mention it on the invoice and let the customer know that they're getting great value out of the just paying for a maintenance call and they're getting, you know, one little thing here and there taken care of. Of course, I'm not going to replace a compressor or a gas valve, you know, but all the little things like maybe uh, trim a wire or something like that and reconnect it with a new connector, stuff like that, that's not a big deal. When I arrived here, this was pressed up against the furnace. Make sure you let your customers know that you don't want anything pressed up against the furnace. The burners are, are right here. If anything was to go wrong, you know, and this gets really hot, this, this cover gets hot, you don't want anything flammable nearby. Oh, I gotta put some water in that pump, make sure that it's not leaking and that it's pumping correctly. Just in case that hose leak before I go, I'm going to connect a little hose clamp on that hose just to make sure that it's not gonna leak. Cause right now the hose, the plus drain hose just goes right into a barb fitting. So we're gonna connect a little hose clamp just for a little additional security. I'm a little out of breath cause I have to keep wearing the this mask 24 seven. Well, pretty much. And I'm going up and down those stairs in the house. Cause the house is on a hill. I know you can't really tell much, but you have to go downstairs cause it's in the basement. So I came for this and a bottle of water to fill up that condensate pump. Let me see if I have an empty one. Oh, here it is. I'll go down there with this one, fill it up and see if the condensate pump is pumping. Hope I didn't clean a dirty, a broken condensate pump for nothing. I think last time I was here, I, I cleaned that condenser, which was a year ago. in there not too tight just a little bit tight so now I'm gonna start filling up the pump should have brought my little little funnel but I didn't I'm gonna pour it in slow because you don't want to activate the second float switch you want to only activate the first one the first one turns on the pump the second float switch which is higher up will turn off will open this circuit and turn off your furnace and that's just in case the pump fails to pump the water out there we go I'm gonna give the condenser a quick little hose, hose me down these condensers are they work just great they're just not fun to whenever you have to clean these these coils, um, they're not easy to to open up and, and do a really good cleaning. But aside from that, they work just great. So for all you maintenance guys, uh, whenever you clean these, or any other condenser for that matter, don't spray your coil cleaner through the panels because all it does is eat away at the paint of these condensers and it just turns them all opaque and they look really old.